Hi YouTube, this is Evie. Welcome back to my channel and today I have another video for you all. Today I would like to talk about the differences between being into BDSM and being a fetishist. Where those two things overlap, what they have in common, and how the general experiences of those two things are different and my thoughts around them. Now I have already made a video where I talk about the differences between kink, a kink and a fetish. That is something I think is important to know for this topic, so if you haven't seen it already I will link to it down below, but just to briefly summarize those terms. When I'm talking about a fetish in this video and just generally in any of my videos for that matter, I'm talking about something that somebody needs that could be an action, a phrase, a texture, an object, a situation, a feeling, anything really, that somebody needs in order to have sexual arousal or an orgasm or has a very very strong sexual connection to. A fetish is inherently linked to somebody's sexuality and is part of their sexual response cycle. There are different degrees to it. Obviously there are people who very much enjoy it and it makes them very aroused all the way up to people who need that specific thing in order to be able to achieve orgasm. On the other side there are just kink activities that can be pretty much anything associated with BDSM or not. So that could be something like bondage, wax play, pet play, etc. Those can all be kink activities. There are people who may have fetishes for a specific thing, like somebody could have a fetish for bondage just as much as bondage is a kink activity, but they're not always the same thing and they're not always done in the same way. Not all kink activities are BDSM activities and not all fetish activities are BDSM activities and vice versa, although again there is some overlap and that's what I want to talk about in this video. If you don't know what BDSM means and you're new here, I will link down below to some videos where I explain what BDSM means if you are not familiar with that particular acronym yet. but for the purpose of this video, I'm going to at least assume you know a little bit about the BDSM community and what the term BDSM entails. Now, regardless of the definitions I just gave, most people treat fetish, kink, BDSM, sadism, masochism, SM, all of those things as interchangeable terms, as interchangeable things. It's all that weird sex stuff, right? Like BDSM is fetish, people who are into BDSM have fetishes, people who are fetishists are into BDSM activities, etc. When that may or may not be true. There are a lot of people in BDSM who have fetishes, there are a lot of people who have fetishes who are not into BDSM at all, and there are a lot of people who just enjoy kink activities that don't have anything to do with a particular fetish need or desire. I think the main difference that these two groups have between each other is that a BDSM activity is an activity. It's something that you do either by yourself with another person or with a group of people. You do rope bondage, you do wax play, you do pet play, you learn how to create fear in fear play, you learn how to have a power exchange dynamic, you learn how to have an ongoing action or an ongoing thing that is happening. It's an action, it's something that occurs and the BDSM thing is the stuff that happens. On the other side we have fetishes and fetishes are specifically linked to having a sexual response. It's not just about, you know, you don't you don't do shoes, you don't do feet unless we're doing do as in slang for like performing a sexual action with, which there are people who fuck feet and there are people who fuck shoes, so let's just get that out there. But fetishes are specifically about creating a sexual response. Fetishes are about having a mental state of sexual arousal, whereas the BDSM activity is just performing that action and that is pretty much how they're different. I don't know if that made sense to anybody but me, but that's sort of how I, I think about those two different spheres. Now you can do a lot of fetish activities in a BDSM context. So for example, you could have somebody who is submissive and has a foot fetish perform foot worship for their dom. This is a very very common way that people who have foot fetishes kind of get their fetish out and, and have their sexual needs fulfilled in a submissive position. You can also totally have a foot fetish as somebody who is a dominant and maybe having somebody worship your feet is very much a turn on for you. You can be somebody who is a rope top who has a bondage fetish that is performing the bondage is sexually arousing for you and you can be a bondage top who just enjoys bondage because it's artistic, it's connecting, it's sensual but it may not be sexually sexually arousing for you and it may not be sexually arousing for the bottom. Now I think the difficulty with the way that vanilla culture and the way that we're raised talks about fetishes and kinks and BDSM is they are all synonymous. So there are a lot of people who have fetishes who are not into bondage, 
power exchange, sadism, masochism, any of those things that are traditionally associated with BDSM, but maybe they really like shoes or they, you know, I don't know, really like sucking on toes. I don't know. I mean, there's a ton of fetishes out there that have nothing to do with BDSM, but people try to go into the BDSM community assuming that they're going to get their fetish needs filled there. But it's really difficult to find somebody in the BDSM community who wants to fulfill somebody's specific fetish. You can totally negotiate for that, but if you're really not into anything BDSM related in terms of your fetish and you really just want to have vanilla sex with your fetish added, the BDSM community is really not the place to have that happen because BDSM people are into BDSM for BDSM reasons. If you are really into feet and you want to be able to touch a woman's feet but you don't want there to be any power exchange, you're not going to be able to have a DS relationship based on foot worship. If you are really into watching a woman walk in high heels but you don't want them to be your dom or you don't want to be their master and telling them to wear high heels all the time, that's also probably not going to work out for you. This is not to say that there aren't people in the BDSM community who are willing to have otherwise vanilla sex with a fetish element added, but there's really not a great way to kind of facilitate the conversation. Most people who are into BDSM aren't really there to have a sexual experience. They're, they're not looking for play partners that they can have sex with. They're not out there looking for one night stands. The experience of having sex in BDSM tends to be very separate for a lot of people. and. Even if they're interested in having sex with somebody, they usually want either some kind of other relationship or extensive negotiation or they want there to be some kind of BDSM component. So again, it can just be really difficult to find. Now there are groups on FetLife that are dedicated to fetishists. There are groups on FetLife that are dedicated to having specific needs fulfilled and you can totally go there, but again, FetLife is mostly for people who are into BDSM. So a lot of things are going to be very BDSM flavored and it can be very difficult to find anybody locally who is willing to engage in specific fetish actions with you. And it can be difficult especially to find people who are willing to treat you like an actual person outside of your fetish needs. So if you really just want to have a girlfriend that you date and you go out to movies with and you hold hands together and then when you are in bed you'd really prefer she kept her shoes on because you really like tennis shoes. That may not be something you can find easily online. It may just be something that you have to start a conversation with with your existing partner. Now, I am not usually one who would give the advice to try to introduce a kink or a fetish or a BDSM activity to somebody who is not naturally inclined to it themselves. I have heard people say things like, you know, how do you know if you're in a bondage if you've never been in it yet? And there are definitely specific activities where you may not realize that you're into it until you try it, but especially with sexual fetishes, usually you know about it from a pretty young age. Fetishes are something that a lot of people have from the time they first become sexual at 10, 11, 12, and it just kind of escalates from there. There are sometimes fetishes that develop later in life, but usually it's not going to be something where you can just try it out once and then go, oh my god, I had this amazing experience. I completely have a fetish for it. Now I need it every single time I have sex. That is not a very common occurrence, but I feel like introducing a specific fetish activity is a lot more easier to navigate than it would be for introducing an entire BDSM lifestyle. Because when you're introducing a lifestyle to somebody, you're asking them potentially to change a lot of things about them personally. If you are a submissive, you're asking your, pro your partner to be a dominant. If you are a masochist, you're asking your partner to be a sadist. Whereas if you're a fetishist, you're really just asking your partner to engage in a specific sexual activity with you. You're not necessarily asking if they change anything fundamental about their personality or how they see relationships. It's sort of like you're asking your partner to use a sex toy or wear a certain color when you have sex or wear a specific type of laundry that they find arousing. And depending on your where your own comfort level is as a person and who you are sexually, that may be something that's relatively easy for your partner to adapt to as compared to BDSM, which can be completely overwhelming and, requ and require a lot of life style and personality change that a lot of people are just not equipped for and that will not work out long term. There's a really great book I'd recommend. It's called Fetish Sex by Violet Blue. I'll put a link if I can find it down below and it has a great way of explaining so many fetishes. Literally, absolutely, you know, all the way through as many different fetishes as you can think of. Be that anywhere from using diapers, age play, sleeping fetish, people who have fetishes for the sounds of balloon popping, sitting in pies, etc. And also a great way of figuring out how it interacts with BDSM and where it doesn't. 
And so I highly recommend that book if you are somebody who has a fetish and wants to find a way to be able to explain it to their partner, or somebody who just wants to know kind of more about how fetishes work in general, if their partner has a fetish, would definitely check that particular book out. And it's really like negotiating for anything else in sex. Be that, you know, trying anal sex for the first time, wanting your partner to be able to fist you, wanting to try deep throating. You really just have to bring it up as, you know, here's something I'm potentially into. How do you feel about that? Where is your comfort level with it? And especially for a lot of people who have sort of, you know, weird fetishes, like the people who really like clowns or balloons popping, it can be really, really nerve wracking. But part of having a stable relationship and having a good sexual relationship is being able to open up to your partner about different fetishes and different things that you want to have, especially if it's very important for you sexually. There's no reason why you should go your entire life hiding it. I really encourage people who are struggling to deal with a particular fetish to just be a little bit open about how you present it to your partner. Perhaps you can watch porn together, that's the kind of person you are, that maybe has a small element of the particular fetish that you like, and just try to get your partner's feedback about, you know, oh, how did you like that part? How did that part make you feel? And kind of gauge if that's something they would be into or if it just outright disgusts them. And it's really up to you after that point if they find your fetish completely disgusting, if you're wanting to continue on the way that you have, or if this fetish is really important to you. It's just like BDSM that way. Is BDSM more important to you than having a vanilla relationship? Do you need to have BDSM as part of your relationship? Do you need to have fetish as part of your sex? It really just depends. Now, if you are in a BDSM relationship and you have a specific fetish, I think it's a lot easier to introduce that into the relationship than it is for people who are just vanilla and have a particular fetish. Because with the BDSM relationship, you already have a lot of the groundwork done. You already have a lot of negotiation that's happened. You already have, you know, hopefully ongoing consent practices and ongoing discussion about particular activities that you're doing. And BDSM people just tend to be more sex positive, And I think that is part of the reason why a lot of fetishes end up going into the community is because we do tend to be very sexually open about a lot of things and very open about different activities and so it can be less intimidating to open up that conversation to somebody that you know hey well they've already beaten my ass black and blue and crushed me with their high heels and spit on my face so really how vulnerable is it to ask them to you know pop a balloon next time we have sex right like it's less vulnerable because you've already kind of opened the pandora's box of like other weird activities that you've done together that aren't vanilla so it can be easier to start that particular conversation but where it can be th i think difficult is as a dominant person introducing a fetish that maybe is typically seen as something that would be submissive for a male. So let's say you are a dominant and you have a fetish for wearing women's clothing. That is usually seen as something associated with being submissive and, uh, you know, part of sissification or bimboification as it happens to be, which I have videos about, by the way, already. If you want to see that, link down below. But that can be difficult and that can be hard because then you're kind of, you know, having to navigate is, can we do this and still have it be a dominant action? Can we have this in a BDSM power exchange dynamic? Does it need to occur outside of their dynamic? Like how do we make this part of the power exchange? And I don't have a particular answer because I am not you. I am not your partner and I don't know what your specific needs are. But I really think that no matter what your fetish is with some limited exceptions. I think there is a way that you can work it into BDSM while maintaining your current state of power dynamic. So again, it's really just about being able to be vulnerable with your partner and how to deal with that. Now, I would just like to end this video by just quickly stating that fetish and BDSM are not completely separate from each other. And I don't want to make it seem like this video like there are. There are a lot of fetishes that do overlap with BDSM, such as having a crying fetish, having a latex fetish, having a fetish for being humiliated, having a fetish for any of a number of different things. There are a lot of activities that happen in BDSM that can also be fetish activities and vice versa. It's just do you want to do those things in a BDSM context? Do you have a crying fetish, but you're otherwise not kinky at all, and you really would just prefer to not have it be all, you know, whips and chains and blood like BDSM often seems? And that's really up to you and the discussion that you have with your partner. On a final, final note, I would also like to add that it can be very difficult to be a fetish person in the BDSM community, especially if you don't really have a lot of other kinks. But I wouldn't necessarily let that stop you if you do have 
you know, mild to moderate BDSM inclinations from being part of the community, engaging on FetLife, and trying to find like-minded people. Because it can be one of your only resources to finding like-minded people, even if you don't otherwise necessarily overlap with BDSM. And at times it can feel ostracizing, it can feel silencing, it can feel embarrassing to have a specific fetish. And no matter what fetish you have, you're not alone. We have these terms not because there's one, ten, or even a hundred people who have this particular fetish. There's literally thousands of people out there, if not more, who share your particular fetish. You're not alone. What really matters is that you're doing it consensually and you're doing it with the full knowledge given to your particular partners that you're engaging with. And I know it can be really nerve-wracking and hard to be open about this particular part of your life, but I would just really encourage trying it at least once. You might be surprised that what a little openness can bring into your life. If you guys have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave that down in the comment section below. If you want to see more from me, I highly recommend subscribing because I make videos twice a week. I also have links to my social media down in the description box below if you want to check out more from me on Tumblr and Instagram. Now, if you like my channel and you want to support me and help me make more content, I would highly recommend you check out my Patreon. That is how I'm able to make more videos like that. I'm able to make exclusive content for the people on my Patreon issues of chat, I take video suggestions with people on Patreon, etc. So if you want to check that out, I will leave a link down in the description box below. But without further ado, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and a great rest of your week, and I will see you all again very soon. Bye-bye.